Hey everyone, this is Mike from the Comic Book Trove, back today with another book review and today I'm going to be taking a look at the first Marvel Gallery edition that I've actually covered on this channel. Uh, this right here is the Spider-Man by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale Gallery Edition collection. Uh, what could better be described really as the Spider-Man Blue Gallery Edition. Uh, and this is really such a great story, it's one I'm happy to have now in this format. I've got to say it looks really great in this kind of huge, giant, oversized style. Um, but this uh, is just one of my favourite Spider-Man stories and really... You know, beyond that, I'd say probably one of my favourite comics. It's something that had a really powerful kind of emotional effect on me the first time I read it a few years ago. It's really one of the most memorable comics I can remember reading. Even though it's really quite a simple story, I think it's very effective. Um, so today I want to sort of show this off, kind of flick through it a little bit, and take the opportunity, of course, to talk about Spider-Man Blue. Uh, this cover, uh, there were a couple of um, designs to this book, really. Um, so this was the standard edition, featuring this large, kind of zoomed-in version of Gwen's face. Uh, making this book very yellow for a book that's called Spider-Man Blue. But what I do like about it is that all this does kind of highlight the blue of Gwen's eyes, which is quite nice. Uh, obviously, then we've got Spider-Man down here as well. Um, the rest of the book is uh, is really quite well designed as well. I like it. Quite simple on the spine there. Nice and straightforward. You've got your creator names, Jeff Lowe, Tim Sale, of course. On the back, you get this image of uh, Gwen and Mary Jane having a fun time. Um, and then a couple of different uh, blurbs at the top and the bottom. Uh, with the one down here just confirming that it does contain Spider-Man Blue issues 1 to 6, the full Spider-Man Blue series. So let's flick this, uh, flick through this then and take a look at it in more detail. I'll give a spoiler warning now before we do go into it and discuss anything in too much detail in case you've never read this book because I do want to um, take the chance, like I say, to kind of touch on a little bit of what this book's actually about, what I think works so well and why I like it so much. And of course, I'll be flicking through the artwork as well. So if you don't want to see or hear anything, if you've never read this book before and you don't want me to spoil stuff, fair warning um, from this point onwards. So this uh, this book is one of um, a few different colour books that Marvel, um, that uh, Loeb and Sale did for Marvel. So there was, as well as this, there was Daredevil Yellow, um, Hulk Grey, and then um, Captain America White as well. I haven't read the Cap one, but I've read... Um, the Spider-Man Blue, Daredevil Yellow and Hulk Grey and I do plan to get each of those now in this gallery format, gallery edition format um, because this is the first of those to be released but in the coming months they are also planning to release that Daredevil and, and Hulk book as well so it'll be cool to have all of those in this uh, this giant format. Um, I'm quite a fan of this now, I've actually uh, dived in and taken the chance to to buy one of these. I think that's uh, it's a format that certainly I can see why it suits certain books really well to have the artwork kind of blown up to these huge dimensions. But this story then, so Spider-Man Blue is primarily told through flashbacks and it kind of reimagines the classic era of Stanley and Steve Ditko's Amazing Spider-Man run, um, specifically from issues, I think it's 40 to 49 from the, the original series. Um, but it's framed through this kind of narrative um, storytelling way of having Peter Parker in the present, um, where he's married to Mary Jane years after all this stuff happened and years after Gwen, of course, sadly died. Um, and on one night, he is basically speaking into a tape recorder, um, but speaking as though he's talking directly to Gwen herself. And it's quite sad because even though he's well aware, of course, that uh, she'll never hear that any of these things that he has to say and never hear how much he still cares for her and how he feels for her all these years later, um, he feels that he still has to say these things and he wants to record it because it's important and he feels that it's a story that should be told even if the one he wants to tell it to the most can't hear it. Um, really quite sad stuff um, throughout here, quite a poignant story really. Um, but then we do these flashbacks and we go back into kind of classic Spidey moments. So this this fight here between Spidey and the Goblin, this is um, from issue 40, the first time that uh, Peter Parker and Norman Osborn learned each other's identities of course. And then throughout here as well we see fights with other key supervillains like the Rhino and the Lizard. Um, to name a couple of others. Uh, but we also spend plenty of time with other characters as well from the supporting cast. So we've got J. John Jameson and the uh, the other members of staff at the Daily Bugle. Gwen and MJ, obviously, which goes without saying, really, they pop into the story. But then we've also got the likes of Aunt May, Harry Osborne, Flash Thompson, all getting their time in the story as well. Um, and what you see in here is, as well as reimagining stuff directly from those classic issues of Amazing Spider-Man, uh, they also kind of expanded on it. Loeb and Sale sort of told stories of what I guess you could say things that happened between the panels to just expand on, on things a little bit um, and also allow more emphasis to be put on 
Peter actually meeting Gwen and their relationship starting to develop, which is the focus of this story at the end of the day. It's mainly Peter talking about how he met her, the impression that she made upon him originally, you know, and uh, and other key moments such as that. And that's all explored, I think, for the most part, really well in here. Although, having just reread it not too long ago, before I bought this actually, because it was rereading this book again for who knows how many times I've now actually read through this over the years, quite a lot. But it was reading it most recently when I decided I had to then pick it up in this particular format because it, it, it just kind of made me realize just how much I really do like this story and how much I don't want to let the opportunity pass by to get this book because I don't know if Marvel will reprint these gallery editions or not. I don't think they do. Um, if they do, somebody let me know, but I'm not sure. I, I, my feeling is that they don't really reprint these. Um, anyway, I need to talk about the artwork though, given that, you know, this format is really all about emphasizing the artwork. Tim Sale's work in this book is just phenomenal. Really, really like it. Um, this is one of the best scenes, reimagining the classic moment from Amazing Spider-Man 42, where Mary Jane makes her first iconic appearance. The running joke at that point had been that Peter had been putting off meeting her because he didn't think that she was going to be the type of girl he would have any interest in, basically. Uh, then, of course, finally he met her and that was completely proven wrong. But here it is, the great reveal. Face it, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. And Tim Sale's take on this scene, um, really, really great. I don't think anything will ever beat the John Romita version, the original version of that scene, but Sale did a really great job of making it his own, I've got to say. And then he's got these great covers throughout as well, so this has been a, a good example of the third cover. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's just a really nice story. So we get scenes here then where, you know, MJ's introduced to the gang, Peter's group of friends. And they're all kind of immediately blown away by this kind of red-headed babe and her party sense, you know, she's the, the main party girl that she is. Contrasting that with um, Gwen, who's the more kind of introverted, um, more of the quiet type. And then it's quite funny to see the scenes kind of that come as the story goes on, where Gwen and MJ both start taking an interest in Peter, and he's kind of not sure kind of what to do with all this sudden female attention. It's, it's all, it's really nice, really sweet and funny. Um, but always, you know, against that backdrop of knowing that however sweet it might be to see Peter and MJ kind of starting to get to, uh, not MJ, sorry, Gwen, in this case, starting to get to know each other. Um, the sadness is always there. That dramatic irony is always there in knowing that the relationship is obviously doomed, you know, and you know where it's going from the very beginning, which just serves to make it all the more sad, really. Um, because you see moments like this where they're just having a good time and, yeah, it's, you kind of see it and then you know where it's going and it just hits quite hard. I don't know, I just think it's all presented well with the artwork and the writing. Loeb and Sale always made a great team. I really enjoyed everything they worked on together. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just a great story. It's something I highly recommend to anybody. If you're a Spider-Man fan at all and have never got around to reading this, then I do recommend that you do so. Um, it's, it's really nice. I mean, the, the specific ending, I will have a look at the ending itself because the ending of this book is one of only a handful, really, that I've ever read of any comic that has managed to kind of bring a tear to my eye. It's, it's really quite an emotionally impactful ending, I think. Um, really nice homage here, obviously, to Amazing Fantasy 15 and scenes here with them. Um, I always really liked the original issues, the, the original Ramita issues of these ones where um, Spidey was fighting Vulture in the snow. I think the artwork that Romita originally did in those issues was, was great. And Sale, as he did throughout this book, did a great job of recreating those scenes as well. Um, yeah, really cool stuff. Honestly, a really nice book. Um, a really good look back at a significant part of Spider-Man history, reimagined through, uh, I guess, through a more modern storytelling style, you can say. Overall, I just think it works really well. Um, I just want to take a look at the ending though, like I say, which is kind of coming up now. Um, these final few pages, which I think are so good. So what ends up happening there was basically Peter misses a whole party because he has to go off and do Spider-Man things. And that would obviously be a key part of his life. And a lot of his relationship with Gwen really was always interrupted by him having to go off and do Spider-Man stuff. But in this scene, um, really nice moment where Gwen turns out to have kind of stuck around waiting for him. She comes in. And they share this intimate moment in this beautifully drawn page by Tim Sale. And then we cut back to the present. And the ending here, which is such a, a standout moment in, in Spider-Man history altogether, I think, not just in this comic, but in general, is this bit where it turns out that, at least for quite a while, MJ in the present had been listening to Peter speaking into this tape recorder and 
and just vocalising all these thoughts about how much she still cares for her and how much she misses Gwen. And rather than her being upset or angry in any way, no negative feelings whatsoever, she comes in and simply says, you know, hi, um, just checking you're okay and say hi to Gwen for me. And that's such a beautiful moment that highlights a few things, really. How important Gwen also was to MJ, because, of course, they were friends as well. Also shows the strength of Peter and MJ's marriage and their relationship in the present at this point in time. Um, and it just allows this kind of quite cathartic experience, I think. It allows Peter to finish off speaking to Gwen. He finishes off this conversation knowing that, you know, his, his relationship in the present, everything's turned out okay for him, but he'll never forget this girl who he first loved. And these final scenes here where he kind of signs it all off and he just says that when he, he thinks about how he feels at this time of the year, it makes him feel blue. Um, and then this final part where he says, and I long for a time when a girl I knew with an incredible smile and so much good in her heart made me think life can be great. And I love that. And this ending, it manages to get me every time, you know, when I have a proper read through it, it really is such a nice ending. And this final panel here where you just have this kind of collection of snapshot images, these photos that they must you know, clearly supposed to have taken at some point in their relationship and just shows in a very concise way just how, you know, how much of a sweet relationship the two of them had at one point. And it's just, uh, yeah, it just works well. I just find it really quite, uh, you know, a heartfelt ending. Quite sad, really, quite sad story, you no know, getting around that fact. But, you know, it's, it's certainly one of the more memorable Spider-Man books I've ever read through and really great to have in this, this really huge, giant, oversized format. In the back, there are some extras. So there's excerpts of an interview with um, Loeb and Sale, talking about this story. I like this bit where it includes some of the original John Romita artwork that Tim Sale took inspiration from and kind of tried to recreate. And there's some um, some sketches as well in the back here by Sale of different characters, MJ, Peter, the Green Goblin, um, and of course Gwen. And all in all, this is just a really nice book, a really good collection. I think it's a great way to, to have this story and it's uh, it's one I certainly don't regret buying now but I would love to hear the thoughts of others you know what do you think of Spider-Man Blue whether or not you've got it in this gallery edition or not um yeah just curious to hear what other people think whether you hold it in as high regard as I do or not either way happy to hear the comments um but thanks as always for watching that's appreciated and I'll be back again soon to discuss something else